Hello everybody, today is January 26, Wednesday. Have you ever wondered if conspiracy theory is the predictive programming? Now what I mean by that is, you ever think about how a lot of the concepts we learn, the normies, they never hear about, and most of them are diabolical methods of controlling the population, psychological operations, things along, or, or, or things in the future that they, they plan on doing. So now, if it is the case, think of how diabolical it is the way they frame the rules of the game. So you come in contact with this information, they condition the population to disregard and reject and deny anything that's outside of what the mainstream status quo conditions them and pets them on the head to believe. So now you're in this paradox where you now suddenly know what you've seen, know what you've experienced, learn from history, and you wonder how everybody else didn't. You're constantly being gaslit. And so now you're in a situation where you want to win and prove that you're right. And so in ways, the they that we're supposedly against, they win because they actually psychologically, uh, the uh, reverse, reverse psychology have gotten the conspiracy theorists to essentially become their salesmen. Okay? So think about it. Who presents all these conspiracy concepts to the normies? The conspiracy theorists. They would have never even known about this stuff. And the people that enlightened us to it, at the same time, condition everybody else to deny it, which puts us in a position of competition to prove that the conspiracies are real, so much so to the point where some of us actually want the conspiracies to happen. And here's another conflict of interest. The professional conspiracy theorist that has a podcast or a TV show or a newsletter or whatever, or even the political pundit, they have a financial incentive to make sure that either the conspiracy theory or the threat remains. For instance, like for instance, police don't have an incentive to remove all criminality because if there were no criminals, there wouldn't be a need for as large of a police force or law enforcement. So it's like cops and robbers have a symbiotic relationship. And the political pundit, well, for instance, think of CNN, right? Now that the guy that they spent four years doing 24-7 coverage of isn't there in the public eye for them to do. They've lost significant viewership. Now, you could say, well, it's because they're fake news and who wants to watch fake news? But they, the person that they were against was actually the greatest thing that happened to their business model. And if we resolved all the conspiracy theories, theories the people that are conditioned that their whole life was to, do the, to be the conspiracy complainer or the paranoid conspiracy, it's almost as if they need perpetual conspiracies to occur. And then that brings me now to the scoring system of conspiracy theory. Now, the status quo normies, established people, they have everything in their favor. They have like the largest point spread ever because they own all the media outlets. And then if you find, if you fi so they have like a rule system of, oh, it's gotta be an authoritative source. Well, they're authoritative sources because they own all of the authoritative sources. They own the book publishing companies, the TV stations, the radio stations, everything. So everything is stacked in their favor to begin with. And then if you actually, if somehow a person, like a professional, that decides, you know, it's not worth it. Truth matters more. 
something that they can't anticipate because they think they bought everybody off. Or an article actually makes its way through. Or information that's counter to their narrative. What they'll then do is provide their apologetics to counter whatever came out and, and, and then discredit, downplay whoever it is that, that went against it. And then they'll say that, did you look at our side or are you only using your own confirmation bias? And it's like, well, no, actually, I mean, yeah, okay, sure, I'm doing a little confirmation bias because I'm trying to win, but <laughs> you provided apologetics. Yeah, hey, I, I was getting ran on out there. So, but basically the idea is, I wonder how many conspiracy theorists were actually there to create the predictive programming to introduce these ideas so that the conspiracy theorists would then turn around and spread these ideas and require people to believe in them so that the conspirators could over time just waltz right in and people will, will already be conditioned to the reality so that it won't seem so abrupt when they do it. It's just a, it's just a thought, like I'm not, it's just something to think about. Like, oh, as a conspiracy theorist, you always have to question your own, like, hey, am I being tricked too? Don't ever think you're too clever to not be tricked. And the question to the crowd is, can you think of any situation where conspiracy theory was used to present the ideas onto the population to condition them and get us ready to experience the new world order i mean after all who talked about the new world order more than the conspiracy theorists you know for instance some of the conspiracy prophecies that came out years ago and then when they actually happen everyone goes back and says wow so and so said this they knew they knew way back then that this was going to happen or maybe they were employed to make sure it happened. Anyway, may the force be with you. See you tomorrow.